My brain is about to enter an altered state of consciousness. At least, that's the plan. Uh -huh. Hello. How are you? Now what? May I sit here? Yes, please. All I have to do is go to sleep. Okay. The first thing that we're going to be doing tonight is putting electrodes on so we can measure your electrical activity and know your stages of sleep. What's that? It's called collodion. It's very similar to airplane glue. And what this airplane is glue is in my hair. As it turned out, only the first of several indignities that lay ahead during my night as a research subject at Harvard University's sleep laboratory. <laughs> I don't want to rush you, but I'm falling asleep. Are you really? Mm. Good. The study I'm joining is to find out what happens to our minds while we're dreaming. Okay, and that's the last electrode. Like most people, I've always been fascinated by dreams, my own especially. How do our brains come up with that stuff? Even more interesting, why? My night began with a test of the state of my brain. You ready? Can you see it? The task is to spot if the second of two words flashed on the screen is a real word. Sometimes the second word seems to be related to the first. When it is, and if my brain makes the association, and I'm usually able to decide if the second word is real or fake more quickly. So by measuring my reaction time, the test can tell how good my brain is at making associations. Bad. Bad. Ah, uh, good. I'm just climb right in. The only association I was interested in right then was between bed and sleep. Not so easy when you know a stranger is eavesdropping on your brain. Alan, I need you to lie quietly with your eyes closed. Okay, if you could blink five times, slowly... This is to check the electrodes the near my eye. They'll be looking out for REM, R-E-M, the rapid eye movements we all make when we dream. Great. Okay, you're all set. You can go ahead and get comfortable and have a good night's sleep. Okay. So if you'll excuse me, I'll leave you in the care of Jen Holmes while I try to sleep with wires pasted on my face and glued to my scalp. Now he's moving, getting comfortable. And you'll typically see some kind of movement when people first start to fall asleep. The top two lines represent his eye movements, and we see that they start a gentle rolling pattern as he falls asleep. The next two lines down are his brain waves, and we see that as he falls into real sleep, they start to get spikier. He's now officially asleep. Our experiment calls for him to do the word association test several times during the night. One of them when he's asleep but not dreaming. That's what's happening now, so I'll go wake him up. After that, my night went to pieces. Every time I drifted off and started a dream, I'd think, oh, good, I have to remember this, and I'd promptly wake myself up. By six in the morning, Jen had been joined by her boss, Bob Stickgold, and it began to look like we weren't going to find out what my brain does when it's dreaming. Since about uh, 2.30 this morning, he's been having a hard time sleeping. Uh, he'll go to sleep, he'll sleep for 10 or 15 minutes here. He's, you can hear the pens slapping around. He's, he's rolling around in bed now. And he's been doing that for hours now. But then, when it was almost too late, I began drifting into a dream. If we wake him up right now, we've got about an 85% chance, 90% chance of getting good REM reports. So what we want to do is wait until he gets another burst. There's some more right there. Look at these. These are really good eye movements. These are fast and they're big. So I think we should go in there now and see what we can get. I was uh, being 
propelled by the solar wind, but the wind wasn't behind me. I was going toward the sun. And then I was flying over Berlin, and I remember thinking that this was uh, called uh, <laughs> nightgown over Germany. It's only about 6.30. It's still early. Oh, it's still early. Oh. Yeah. Well, let's try. Let's try. OK. Pleasant okay. dreams. With one dream in the bag, I felt better about trying for another. So that once again, I could be awakened for that exciting word association test. So how did it feel to you that you slept? How did, I, how did it feel that I slept? Yeah. I had a worse night of sleep at, at a truck route <laughs> in New Zealand. Really? Yeah, it was an interesting... By now, all I wanted was a little breakfast and the airplane glue out of my hair. But I was also curious, of course, about the tests I'd been taking. What did they have to do with dreaming? That's not good. Most dream researchers believe that during REM sleep, the normal signals to the brain from our bodies are cut off. Instead of receiving inputs from our eyes and ears, the visual and auditory centers are flooded with signals surging up from the more primitive regions of the brain. These signals, the theory goes, are completely random and meaningless. I said to myself, because first I went But dreams, out of course, seem to make yeah, sense, at least at the time. Period. The wonderful part about it was I went out through my nose. <laughs> See? <laughs> so then I had all these words I was hearing. So the key question is, where do the stories of our dreams come from? According to Bob Stickgold, we simply make them up as we go along. I'm a little thick this morning because I, I had this funny night's sleep. I still don't quite get how you arrive at the conclusion that something in the brain is supplying story and meaning and uh, 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 coherence to, to these random images, uh, uh, and not that they're coming up in a more coherent way already. If you look at your dream, I mean, there you have this thought of, gee, it's, it's going to be an out-of-body experience. And first of all, it goes out through your nose. I, I'm sorry. It's just hard for me to believe that someone scripted that for you to do. You were just thinking, out of body. How am I going to get out of body? Help me, somebody. How can I get out of body? And something in your brain says, now oh, your nose. So during dreaming, our brains are scrambling to make sense of nonsense. Here's where the word tests are revealing. Because subjects awakened from REM sleep are quicker at making associations between the words than when awakened from non-REM sleep, or even when they're wide awake during the day. It's as if during REM sleep, our brains are primed to put together stories from random images and feelings. Our guesses, and it's truly just a guess at this point, is that the brain is just trying to keep up with these random inputs and trying to use everything it knows to make some kind of sense out of it. Well, welcome to your home for the week. That might be how we dream, but it still leaves the question of why. Isn't it nice? This experiment, being conducted in the sleep lab at Trent University near Toronto in Canada, is suggesting dreaming helps us learn. Okay. See you in the morning. Hi. Lara Sylvester is spending four nights of her summer vacation here. At least she gets to sleep in peace. The aim of the study is to see how active her eye movements are during dreaming while she's in a relaxed, summery frame of mind. Recording and counting her eye movements is researcher Carlisle Smith. Summer's over and Lara is studying hard for her final exams. Now her brain is in high gear, right up through the finals themselves. Her mind still buzzing from all that learning. Lara again gets to sleep in the lab. And now the number of rapid eye movements during her dreams is strikingly different. For some people, there's almost a doubling of the number of eye movements after they've had intense learning activity than when they've been just in a, in a summer mode, for example. This discovery led Smith to wonder if the extra eye movements during learning are useful. Do these apparently more intense dreams actually help us learn? One unit woof. So he set up an experiment to see if learning a complicated logic game was affected by how much dreaming a person does. The game is baffling enough to explain, let alone play. 
but it involves making letter combinations according to complex rules. A or E to start off with, so you can then make one final gigantic messy woof. The game is a tough test of logical thinking. The students' skills at the logic game were tested, and then they were given a much simpler memory test. After seeing pairs of words, they were shown one of them and had to remember its partner. Then some of the subjects, this is Catherine, got to have a night's sleep almost as bad as mine. What we're trying to do is deprive them of two REM periods. So once she goes from stage two to REM sleep, I will go in and wake her up. Catherine, good morning. What? Once awakened, Catherine is kept awake for five minutes by a math task to make sure she doesn't slip back into her dream. Other students were the experiment's controls, either being awakened when they weren't dreaming... You should get up for a few minutes. ...or getting to sleep through the night in peace. A week has passed, and it's time for the memory test again. Catherine, deprived of dreams, doesn't do as well as she did before. But then neither do any of the subjects, even those whose night was undisturbed. But then came the logic task. And this time there was a significant difference between the dream deprived and the dream indulged. Any tasks where it just seems to be straight memorization that's involved uh, don't appear to be vulnerable to sleep loss, REM sleep loss. But tasks where some kind of more uh, understanding is involved. You not only have to, to memorize some rules, but you have to be able to apply the rules. That kind of material uh, is vulnerable to REM sleep loss. Carlisle Smith now took a daring leap. What if people could somehow be prompted to learn during dreaming? A new batch of student volunteers hear a loud clock while learning the logic game. When they're tucked in for the night, some of the subjects now wear earphones. And whenever their eyes are darting most rapidly, they get to hear ticks reminiscent of the clock. The idea is to see if the ticks remind the dreamer of the learning task right in the middle of her dream. The results were startling. Students who heard ticks during active eye movements proved far better than controls in learning the logic task, suggesting that being reminded of a problem during dreaming helps us tackle it. All in all, finding out that not only is my mind more capable of mental leaps when I'm dreaming, but that I might actually be doing something useful with that ability made my night at the sleep lab seem worthwhile, at least in retrospect. It's nice to know that something we spend perhaps a tenth of our lives doing is more than simply nightly entertainment.